This week's video picks up seconds after the last one, so close even that the last video isn't rendered out and uploaded yet. I've changed my mind on this belt path. The clip, zip ties, and doubled up belt add quite a bit of thickness to the whole setup, uh, so much so that I'm losing about 20 millimeters of travel on either side. And 40 millimeters doesn't seem like a lot, but when I'm only starting with 100 millimeters to begin with, that 40 millimeters is nearly half. My solution to that is that I have to move the belt attachment point to the top wheel, and this means that I have to redesign the idler support and belt clamp. I've got the new belt bracket and the updated idler mount designed, and I'm about to send the first one to the printer. After a fair bit of trial and error, I've made some progress with the firmware. I'm using an LED as a servo analog because the same PWM signal that tells a servo what angle to go to uh, can be used to change the brightness of an LED. Using the M280 command, I can tell the servo to go to a position, and in this test setup, it will change the brightness of the LED. Telling it to go to position 0 dims it a fair bit, and then telling it to go to position 180 makes it a lot brighter. I just mounted the new parts. You can see that the new bearing mount is aligned with the top section of the T-slot. Uh, this belt now attaches to the top wheel. With this new belt path, the bottom wheels butt up against the bracket on one side and the nut on the other side, meaning I've gained back all my travel. Using the top bolt head as a reference point, you can see that the left starts about 10 millimeters from the edge and the right it ends almost perfectly lined up with the edge, meaning that I went from about 60 millimeters of total travel to about 90 or 100. Okay, it's been a few days since I recorded anything and uh, I've made actually some pretty cool progress. So I've decided to ditch the idea of using a drywall knife as the sweeper, just because I did a bunch of research online and the professional level ones, they all use a roller that rolls the opposite direction of the motion. And if that's what all the professional systems use, I figured that I might as well try and incorporate that into mine. So I've been working on that. I, uh, this is actually an old selfie stick that I've been modifying because it was the easiest way to get a metal cylinder that was sort of the right size, at least close enough to the right size for my purposes. I've actually put a lot of work into this thing. So there was a lip here. Come on, focus. It's a little out of focus, but my phone won't focus, so you're just gonna have to deal with it. There was a lip here that, I've, that I had to use my Dremel to grind down, and that was a good an eighth inch of material that I had to grind through and then sand flat and that took forever to do. Um, I've used some JB Weld to put two nuts in the end here so that once I finish printing out another one, there'll be two brackets holding this so that this can spin. I'm using a GT2 pulley here that will attach to a motor that I haven't figured out how to mount yet, but that's, but yeah, so once I get that, I'll be able to run a belt to this to actually drive the system, drive it the right way for it to sweep right. And over here on the actual printer, I have these linear rod holders that I'll be mounting the off cuts of the ZX linear rods to. I printed out the first version of this holder and fitted it with a bearing analog I printed out. Amazon is being slow about delivering my bearings. I have one side printed and mounted so you can get a feel for how it's going to work. The roller lifts up and out of the way while the laser is centering the material so that it isn't rolling over the newly printed layer. I'm going to use a servo to lift the parts out of the way. I have to design a motor mount to attach one of the stepper motors to spin the rod. Uh, the rod has to spin backwards so it's actually picking up material not just compacting the material that's already there. I'm trying on a new feature in Prusa Slicer where you can insert a pause at a certain layer height. I'm using it to drop a bearing into the holder and then print layers over it to fully capture it so no mounting hardware is needed. I now have both sides mounted and after messing with it, I can tell that it tends to rack a lot. So I'm gonna to need to design some kind of tie rod to rigidly link the two parts together so they can't rack. This is what I'm talking about with the support rod. So this will mount on there. I'll just put one of those same rod holder designs on the ends, on the front faces of each of these bearing holders. So it'll tie these two together so they can't rack.
I've redesigned this lift mount again to include a motor mount and a tie rod. The whole system is a little finicky, like it still racks if you lift from the wrong side. Uh, I think part of that is that I'm not using real bearings, I'm still using the printed ones. However, if you lift from just the right spot, it's super smooth. So this is where I'm going to mount the servo. It doesn't have to lift the whole thing too high, just two or three millimeters, uh, just enough to clear the part, so I'm not super worried. I made a custom length loop of belt using just super glue. It's not the right way to do it, but I don't have the tools here to splice it properly. Uh, this should work. I got the flower out to test the new roller assembly, and of course, the first test, the belt broke. I have a new one that I just cut. I just have to wait for the glue to dry. I'm going to research getting an actual belt loop of the right length, though. Okay, I've just mounted the new fixed belt and I've run a few tests and I'm super happy with the results. The surface is lumpy because the roller is not concentric. Once I get a new roller, it should be totally smooth. Uh, this lip in the middle is exactly why I need a servo to lift up the roller mechanism. It drags some of the material back before I manually lifted it up. Here you can see the roller rolling in the opposite direction like I've explained before. This working so well, even though the roller is messed up, is a really good sign. Uh, once I have the laser and the actual powder, I'll be able to start getting some parts out of this machine relatively quickly. In the meantime, if anybody has any ideas for a good testing methodology that can work to test the system before I have the laser, drop your ideas in the comments below. Okay, I think I'm going to end this video here. Um, I've made some good progress, and... It'll be a little bit before the next one just because I need to wait until I can actually afford to buy the laser and the powder to do uh, an actual first test of the print. Um, it's cool to think that I'm within a, a few parts of potentially getting some parts out of this. So if you like this series and you want to stay up to date on the project, consider subscribing. I'm trying to post videos weekly, but it's a very loose schedule. Uh, no promises there. If you like this video, consider doing the thumbs up thing. That uh, helps me out a lot to know what you guys like. Also, with this video, I did something a little different. I recorded a bunch of voiceover and overlaid it over the video instead of just using the in the moment recorded audio. It helped me to cut out a lot of the dead air and the, the ums and stuttering that I do. So if you like that over the in the moment audio, let me know down in the comments. Or better yet, let me know on my Discord. There's a link to join that down in the description too. So I've got actually a couple of, I've got a fair number of people that have joined already, so we're slowly building out a community around this, so it'd be great if everyone watching this joined that, so we can talk about the project, just 3D printing in general there. Let's see, I did banana the first time, I did clamp the second time, this time, let's go with the word bearing. If you watch the video all the way to the end, comment the word bearing down below.